Hey, Rare Life Traders, live and here from sunny San Diego, California. This was the spot of my uh, trading domicile for most of the morning. Felt pretty good about it. Uh, snagged about 0.7 Rs, but I'll be showing you in today's update what we played in the room. Uh, I had a meager profit uh, <laughs> compared to a few other traders. It was pretty phenomenal, but nice little view over here. Throw the camera that direction. Boom, baby. Very beautiful up on the next step. Got the freeway there, looking at the cars, beautiful stuff. Anyway, folks, uh, I'll be in LA later in the, at the end of the week. A lot of big, exciting news coming your way. You guys are amazing. Next week is the free open house week, ladies and gentlemen. 18th of June from Monday to Friday. I'm gonna see you guys there. You rock. Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading Day at Cam. Trust everyone's doing splendid. We have the SPY on the board, really nothing magically new to report. We did make a higher high and a higher low. Uh, we did have a retest gap on a Monday. So it would make sense realistically for us to potentially do something like that this week, but it would still be a dip buying opportunity. The weekly chart, we're nearing a resistance, but again, beautiful gap on the weekly chart here. So honestly, I mean, I think we're gonna go a little bit higher, um, then we'll go a little bit lower, and then we'll go a little bit higher again, right? Buy the dip, trend looks good. Got a lot of bullish trades out there. Thumbs up all around. Q's looking pretty fresh. IWM um, still in a bullish trend. And then the Dow Jones, Dow Jones ETF just chilling. So that's really as far as the broader market's concerned. Nothing too wild and crazy. Although I did get a request for XLV. This is the healthcare sector ETF. And here's the weekly chart. And as you can see, it does follow the S&P or the SPY pretty closely which is another reason that I track it every single day in the stock review is because most of the big spider funds that track the broader market will be pretty closely moving together. So the weekly chart, right? We're still in a bullish trend, beautiful bounce around here off of the 50 EMA on a weekly. And you had a really nice bullish gap and go just on the 6th of June. Trend looks delicious. So, I mean, really best case scenario would be a pullback to about 84 as that would be a nice dip buying opportunity. But from here, next short term target, 86.57. And then from there, all the way back up um, to the low 90s on ticker symbol XLV. Here's some other requests I had, VTGN. Let's go check that one out. Uh, VTGN Therapeutics Company. All right. And you had an interesting gap the other day, but the overall trend is bearish. So overall bearish trends, and we're gonna have to find some volume or some closes or something in here that shows us uh, that we're gonna be in, uh, changing from a bearish trend to a bullish trend. Although you do have some very interesting bullish volume spikes that is something to keep your eyes on. Here's the daily chart. And since you did have a very pretty bullish gap and go recently on good volume, um, a few ways to play this one. I mean, I don't know what the stock does, but one way mathematically would be find out your risk. Say your risk is a thousand bucks. Then you take a thousand dollars and you divide it by a dollar forty-two, and that's how many shares you could buy. And worst case scenario, you lose a thousand bucks, and it would have to go to zero. So it'd be seven hundred and four shares that you could buy. And if it goes to zero, you lose a thousand, but upside's unlimited. So that's one choice. Another one would really be to pick up some here with the stop somewhere in this gap. That would be choice number one. Um, you know, so if it breaks higher, get in. And if it breaks lower and you do not get filled bullish, then you could buy around $1.07 with a stop down here somewhere at 79 cents and see if she bounces from there. But overall trend right now is bearish still on a primary level. And uh, the big signal, a good signal will be a close above the high of today. Next on the review list was ticker symbol AG. And this is a fun one. This is a silver stock. Actually, this is the first stock that I ever, ever, ever played. Um, actually playing it, like going in with money, having an idea of what the stock market is. Uh, this was all the way back. I mean, this was a while ago. So we're talking, yep, 2011. So seven years ago, this is when I started doing uh, started doing covered calls on this one in my uh, 401k when I worked at Charles Schwab. Uh, not when I worked at Charles Schwab. Well, Charles Schwab is my 401k, but when I worked at Nationwide Insurance. 
So anyway, this was AG. That was all the way back when I started trading it. And we've had some really fun moves since then. And right now, I would have to agree. We're in a little bit of a bullish trend on the daily. Here's the weekly. And you're above all the moving averages on the weekly. That's definitely a big bonus. Long term, we got above the 200. So I would say 823 is a support level that I've had in here for quite some time. The 100 is also right about there. So if I was looking for a target, that would be it to me, it would be 820. I really like the gap. I like today's candle and I like the volume. So look for AG to continue a little bit higher. Here's Raytheon. A lot of people keeping a real close eye on this puppy to break out. 214.98. Have had this trigger on here for a little bit. I like the volume. I like the higher lows. I like the relative highs. Get ready for this bad boy to pop out of here. We'll see if it actually happens. Don't know if it will or not. But the longer it trades sideways, the higher and higher you can take the stop to increase your risk reward. But that does look quite delish. Next on the list is Union Pacific UNP. And UNP up 1%. Uh, what is this doing? A weekly chart. I have a lot of drawings. Oh, yes, I did. I back trade UNP the other day. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why do I have so many charts on this? I don't actively trade it, but I did uh, back trade this one. Very good breakout. So you'll notice huge all-time high resistance from 2015. There's the breakout right there. There's the retest. That's the spot to be buying. Uh, so as of now, if you're in bullish, stay in. Trend looks good. I wouldn't specifically be a buyer exactly where we are because, again, this is almost the highest we've ever been. But um, I would have gotten in based on this candle here above the high, so 143.71. So let's say if it pulls back to about 143, that would be where I would look to buy the dip with a stop at about 139, uh, if you're not already in. But otherwise, trend looks pretty decent. Here is Norfolk Southern. Wee wee. Hey man, come on down, get some, get some biscuits and grits, man. Cornbread, biscuits, grits, get some shrimp, get some sausage, get some bacon, Norfolk Southern. Woo. So here's the resistance on NSC. Uh, and we are here. We are at that all-time high. Never been higher on Norfolk Southern, which is rarely the time to buy at the highest price it's ever been. So my thought is you could have a support resistance level down at about here at 130. And here's the resistance presently. So if you're going to take a breakout, this needs to chop around a lot more as this is the daily chart. Um, if it does break up and close above here and really prove that it wants to make new highs, great. From there, just buy the dip off of the old resistance new support. Otherwise, uh, just be cautious going long here until it can really show that it wants to make that new high because we could easily have some nice bearish candles and roll right back over, which would be you know fun for the bearish traders as well. But secondly, if I was going bullish, I'd wanna see just more consolidation and then a pop out if I was going to go long on a breakout on Norfolk Southern. But that is a stock that we look at pretty frequently on transportation thursday in fact just as a reminder it is one week away june 18th through the 22nd that's next week all week is the open house week for both the morning day trading room and the afternoon swing trading room you'll notice it says that right here and it also says that right there so make sure to hop in join it it's free tell your friends tell your family tell everybody we're enriching lives all across the globe Next on the list, we have UNH. And let me go look at UNH really quick. So UNH, United Healthcare, again, all time high. A lot of stocks making all time highs. It's a buy the dip type of market. All, you know, has been for quite some time. And we can see just some beautiful retests here too. White candle gapping up and it retested. So strange. Such a strange retest right there. Beautiful bullish gap and go right here on the 6th of June. So again, we'll be buying it today since we've never been higher. But if it does pull back or if it did pull back into about the 246, 247 price range, that would be where I would buy it uh, if I was not already in. If I was in, just keep holding. Trend looks good. All right. Here's Boyd Gaming, BYD. Boyd up a percent. Um, weekly chart. I mean, this looks, you know, the overall trend looks pretty good. Uh, what we're doing right now is just battling this ginormous level. Let me just take all this off right here. So there's a lot of support resistance where we are at the present moment in time. So you got some support there. You got some support there. So this is a resistance zone. We're going to battle up here for a little bit more than likely. So if you're long the stock on Boyd, it looks pretty. Um, and as long as it doesn't take out the low of this candle. So this is the candle from June the 6th. 
If it holds that low, um, or it's gonna be a little bit more bullish than bearish, but if it takes out that low, especially if it does it that tomorrow, we will go lower and we will chop around this resistance zone for probably a couple more months at the minimum on Boyd Gaming. So that's BYD. Next on the list is TEVA and TEVA Pharmaceuticals. Uh, so it had its retest just the other day. So there were some traders asking, when is this gonna retest? And I think this was back here on the 25th of May, right? Just a bunch of candles and then really all of this right here is the rest. That is the pullback, that is the rest, retest, that is the continuation pattern right into the 10. So hopefully you were buying sometime around uh, the pullback on the 4th of June or the 5th or the 6th or the 7th. Breakout was on Friday and we did make a little bit of a higher high and a higher low today. Now, if you're not already in, again, uh, buy the dip. I think at about 22.18 is reasonable. We're above the 50 EMA. That looks nice and you got a long way to go into the 100 symbol. That's TEVA. Next on the list is JD.com. Hi, my name is JD with JD.com. Just as a reiteration, for those who are watching, I did post a killer chart analysis on JD actually a couple months ago, and it really worked out spectacularly. So this was right here, April the 3rd. Yep, so three months, two months ago, and we're just kind of dictating that wave count that we would trade back into the 100 on, a, on the weekly chart. It's about $34, and there we go. So JD.com, once that loads, um, it really just trades down just beautifully to that price, and that's where you start getting that bounce. Gorgeous, gorgeous analysis. So yeah, down here, I mean, it is a buy low, sell high. You got a nice double bottom on the daily chart. We'll see if it actually pulls back down to that price. You're going to find out this week because this is a pennant pattern. So it's either going to break down and come back down here and then bounce potentially, or just break out of this pennant pattern. I think it's just going to break out the pennant pattern and keep running. So if you did buy JD.com down here, congratulations. I hope it goes higher for you. Three left on the list. This is uh, one of Justin Linderman's good buddies and workmates on AMD micro devices. And here's the weekly chart. So what's gonna happen on AMD up here more than likely is this is just an absolute blistering beast. Trading higher, nice little wave three, you're at a resistance. So very, very strong resistance on AMD. Here's the daily chart, but this is a nice, very fast retest. If you are in AMD shares, hold them. Uh, at least do a covered call, maybe about uh, $17 sometime for early July, late June. We just need to consolidate up here is most likely what we're gonna do. So we're probably gonna break out, make a new high. That's when all the newbie traders hop on and we're gonna consolidate for a little bit longer until earnings and then most likely continue higher. That is the direction of the trend. And the reason I think we're gonna pull back a little bit just because we have so many white candles in a row. But I love the level. Beautiful bounce off the 100 on a weekly. This is a distribution uh, phase right here on AMD. And I would have a lot of confidence if I was in some shares of AMD to keep holding. Same thing with Micron Technology. We are actually are in a swing trade on Micron Technology. This was the exact setup. And uh, my little green, not green, pink line is me kind of uh, stipulating what I think is likely going to occur. Earnings on MU right around the corner. This one's a tough one. If I had shares uh, and I don't mind holding, I would likely give it two, three more days and then do some covered calls up into this area. Uh, and, and if MU does gap above that area on earnings, which are about a week away, if it gaps above 65, then I would buy to close that covered call as MU is likely going to stampede. However, if MU does gap down, which is also equally possible, if it opens below 56.62 on earnings, you will see it trade down into about the mid 40s and then likely continue higher. So which one's gonna happen on MU? I truly do not know. The trend is bullish. If I'd have shares, I'd keep them. Um, if you're in a longer term position anyway, and short term, you know, this little quick, quick swing trade, we'll be looking to get out before earnings. My plan is if MU doesn't close above a new all-time high before earnings, I won't hold over earnings. But um, if we close above like 65, 67, something really strong into earnings, uh, I likely will hold the swing trade over earnings. There are a few traders with some put sales and that one looks good. Last but not least, requested General Electric. 
my friends, General Electric is a dead chart. Um, there's just other things to make money in, right? You got a massive lower high on a primary level. They're, they're debt restructuring, they're cutting their, I mean, they, the credit cut, the credit crunch that they went through. Sure, you could make, you know, a decent 100% return on GE if you bought now and it goes back up to 31. Um, that could take two, three, four years, right? A good return, not bad, but what if GE cuts dividends? Certainly possible. They've been around forever. Um, I don't know. It, it just looks like a dead chart to me. And if you want to be in something for a very, very long period of time, sure, GE could be plausible. But looking at the charts, I just don't see a lot going on. If I'm trading GE bullish, it's on very short-term moves. Hours to days, right? Trying to catch that move, trying to catch this move. Right now, I don't really see anything on GE. Uh, there's not a lot of people talking about GE. It's not like there's blood in the streets. No one really cares. It's just kind of washed up. In my opinion, there's probably other places to put your uh, put your money, and it can be on as equally as a quote-unquote boring blue chip stock if you want. Um, I don't know if it's going to return 100% or not on any case, but on GE right now, I think there's better ones to put your money in, a little bit more speculative, something like, I don't know, Apple, the most profitable company in the world, which has an amazing chart. Nice little bullish trim, buy the dips. They make more money. They could buy GE every single quarter if they wanted to. So it's hard to fight the trend, ladies and gentlemen. It's difficult. And the trend right now in GE does not look promising. All right, folks, that almost does it for me. I promised in my earlier review that I would show you the two trades that we took today. Um, EVHC was a swing trade that we've played. Uh, that I got into bullish a few days ago and was unaware that they were actually going to get bought out. A lot of traders did some put sales on Envision Healthcare, and they made some really good gains. They got into those put sales on Friday, playing the implied volatility move. Once the buyout was inked, uh, the stock gapped up, and we all sold for a very small profit, about a quarter of an R. But I'll take it. Good gain on Envision Healthcare. Thumbs up all around. The big winner for the day for most traders was um, probably Applied Opto Electronics, a white candle. Gapping down below the wick of this candle, below the wick of this candle, below this white candle, below this white candle. Uh, here is the first five-minute candle. And what you'll notice is you had a gorgeous, bullish, high-wave candle on the five-minute. That's my favorite setup. Entry here, stop here, would have made at least a little bit of a gain. Latoya played it a little bit more aggressively on the one-minute chart and just absolutely wrecked that trade. A lot of traders got two R's on applied opto electronics from the morning day trading room uh, playing this one minute time frame, this one minute rollover right here. Boom, there's your S curve, boom, boom, boom. Just gorgeous stuff. So that was applied opto electronics and there was one other one. Um, I did play that one for half an hour. The other one I think was AD&T. It's not on my watch list for some reason. Let me see, AD&T, yep, that was it. So here's the daily charts and this one was another stupendously sensational bearish gap and go. I mean, look at that. White candle gapping down. People who bought just getting wrecked. And here's that five minute chart. Look at that bullish high wave candle. Boom, shaka, laka. Gorgeous stuff overall. But on the day, thanks to Envision Healthcare and Applied Opto Electronics, up 0.7 hours on the day, which puts me at five hours for the month of June. Slowly, churning and burning, enriching lives, and I am so pumped about next week. Be there or be a triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you later. Until next time, love life, love life, and trade. Bye.